Greetings. We are Kimberly Van Wielden, Lori Gooding, and Diana Dumlawala from the United States of America, and we welcome you to our presentation entitled The Gap Between Special Music Education and Music Therapy, a Philosophical Discussion. To understand the context of our presentation, we must first set the foundation of what is special music education and music therapy so we can move forward. Let's look at some definitions of these two comparable professions. Music education is defined as a field of study associated with the teaching and learning of music. The primary purpose of music education is to work on music goals with educational objectives. Defining special music education is a bit more difficult because there is no set definition. However, if we use the definition for music education as the foundation, then special music education is a field of study associated with the teaching of music to and the learning of music by persons with disabilities. Again, the primary purpose is to work on music goals with educational objectives. This is a picture of one of Kim's university students teaching music concepts to a secondary student with special needs. Since the purpose of this lesson was to work on music goals with educational objectives, this is an example of special music education. Music therapy is defined as an allied health profession in which credentialed music therapists apply evidence-based music interventions within a therapeutic relationship to help service users improve, restore, or maintain individualized physical, sensory, psychological, cognitive, and social functions. The primary purpose of music therapy is to work on non-music goals with therapeutic objectives. In this picture, you see Lori, a music therapist, working with a child with spina bifida in a pediatric hospital. Sessions with this preschooler focused on individualized developmental and motor goals, and Lori used developmentally appropriate evidence-based interventions like active music making and patient-preferred music to ensure that music therapy services were effective. Lori, like other allied health professionals in the hospital, also followed infection control precautions, such as the gown and gloves, received a referral for services, and documented in the patient's chart to communicate progress with other providers on the child's treatment team. While there are similarities between the two professions, such as they both are led by trained musicians, often work with the same student or client populations, use similar music-making activities, and provide accommodations and modifications to meet the needs of their students or clients, there are distinct differences between the two in terms of philosophy, study and accreditation, and goals and objectives. In the most general sense, the difference is that one profession works on music goals with educational objectives, while the other works on non-music goals with therapeutic objectives. However, there are many music activities for persons with disabilities where specific educational or therapeutic objectives are not the primary focus. This is what we're terming the gap. Many musical experiences fit within this gap and are incredibly beneficial as they function as an integral part of people's lives. The question then is not whether these programs should be provided and encouraged, but rather if these should be umbrellaed under special music education or music therapy, or if a separate designation is required to accurately encompass the philosophy, scope, and objectives. We believe that our commission should discuss this question as we represent one of the leading international voices regarding working with persons with disabilities. What music activities fall in the gap? 
After looking at a wide range of terms and their definitions, we believe there are three primary music-based experiences that fall in the gap between music education and music therapy. They are community music, recreational music making, and music-based wellness experiences. Using the definition in the ISMI Community Music Activity Commission's mission statement, community music comprises music activities that provide opportunities to construct personal and communal expressions of artistic, social, political, and cultural concerns beyond formal music education. Since the purpose and scope of community music activities encompasses more than just working on music goals with educational objectives, which is the primary purpose of music education, we decided to place these types of activities within the gap. Recreational music making is defined as using music-based activities to facilitate non-music-based outcomes, such as intellectual stimulation, social support, enhanced coping, and stress management. Recreational music making brings together individuals of varying ages, backgrounds, ethnicities, and abilities to engage with each other in an enjoyable environment. Since the primary purpose of recreational music making is to facilitate non-music based outcomes, it is more similar to music therapy. However, it isn't completely within the realm of music therapy since these types of activities do not need to be facilitated by credentialed music therapists, nor do they usually apply evidence-based music interventions within a therapeutic relationship. Music-based wellness is the use of music experiences to proactively maintain or restore quality of life, maximize well-being and potential, and increase self-awareness. This is not to be confused with how the term wellness is used in the performance and pedagogy fields where the physical and mental well-being of musicians is addressed. Again, these types of activities that focus on the wellness of the client or participant are similar to music therapy. In fact, the majority of groups that engage in these types of activities are facilitated by credentialed music therapists. However, we placed music-based wellness experiences within the gap because these activities do not usually apply evidence-based music interventions within a therapeutic relationship. So as you can see on this slide, music experiences can be located on a continuum from music education to music therapy. It is important to note that all of the experiences identified have value. However, they have different purposes, scopes, and training requirements. Exploring their differences and similarities will allow us to more accurately determine which experiences will be most beneficial for participants based on the purpose setting, and desired participant outcomes. Again, we believe this is an important discussion for our commission, as we represent one of the leading international voices who work with persons with disabilities. So, let's give you some examples of how community music, recreational music making, and wellness differ using different scenarios of the same group. This is a picture of an older adult choir that Kim facilitates. She meets with this group at a local senior citizen center. She also brings some of her university students to the choir to learn how to facilitate these types of groups. That is why you see some young people in the picture as well. In scenario A, Let's say the purpose of this group is to learn choral music with the goal of performing concerts. The members are encouraged to suggest a repertoire to perform that has meaning to them. They are also encouraged to suggest options of how best to express the music, such as through telling stories about the time period the music was composed to provide greater meaning of the text or through movements 
gestures, or choreography. Since this scenario highlights music making with the goal of music performance, provides opportunities to construct personal and communal artistic expressions, and is outside the formal music education setting, then this is an example of community music. In scenario B, let's say the purpose of this group is to give older adults a place to meet others once a week and sing songs they enjoy. Since most of the members live alone, the rehearsals include opportunities to connect with others in the group beyond singing, such as meet and greet activities and partner dancing. While there is no mandatory attendance, most members attend every week. Handshakes and hugs are common, and members take it upon themselves to phone anyone who misses a rehearsal, just to check if they are okay. Since this scenario highlights a music-based activity to facilitate social support, this is an example of recreational music making. In scenario C, let's say the purpose of the group is to improve the emotional and physical well-being of the members. To facilitate these goals, the rehearsal includes activities to help the members increase the volume of air moved in and out of their lungs for vital capacity, through vocal warm-ups and phrase length, as well as to stretch atrophied muscles in the arms, neck, and torso through physical warm-ups and simple choreography. The director keeps the rehearsal upbeat often including funny anecdotes, and highly encourages the members to smile and see the positive side of situations. To her, it is very important the members leave the rehearsal happier than when they arrived. Since this scenario highlights a number of non-music goals with the purpose of living a better and more positive life, this is an example of music-based wellness. In each of the previous examples, the delineation between the scenarios was relatively clear. However, it can be difficult to transfer this knowledge to other situations. Therefore, we will highlight a few other music experiences that we feel fall within the gap. This is a picture of an adult group piano class that is facilitated by Diana and her students. This class emulates many of the characteristics found in music education settings. Qualified piano instructors lead the class, and for some individuals, the goal of participating is to learn how to play the instrument. However, the music learned is based on the preferences of the individual participants. Additionally, some participants may be interested in joining the class for the social benefits that stem from the group setting as seen in recreational music making. They may also be attracted to the cognitive and physical advantages associated with learning how to play the piano, which may enhance their own wellness. Instructors act more like facilitators who accompany the participants to guide them on their musical journey. Attendance is not mandatory, and the overall focus of the class is on musical enjoyment rather than musical excellence. Drum circles are rhythm-based community events that use hand drums and other percussion to empower individuals and provide opportunities for creative musical expression. They are accessible and fun music-based experiences that help individuals of all ages and abilities to enjoy music making in a community setting. In this image, you see a drum circle facilitator leading a group of individuals in improvisational active music making. This experience does not have educational or therapeutic goals. Instead, it is focused on creating a situation where people can make music in community with one another. So it would best fall into the community music category. In these images, you see musicians at the bedside and in a hospital atrium playing music. Music performances in hospitals do not have specific individualized goals and objectives, do not involve a credentialed music therapist, do not rely on the use of music within a therapeutic relationship, and are not designed to improve functional outcomes. 
They also do not involve active music making like community music or recreational music making, and there are no educational goals related to music as there would be in music education. On the other hand, hospital-based music performances do impact the aesthetic experience and can often improve mood or impact individuals' perceptions of the hospital setting. So musicians playing music in hospital settings, like those in these images, may improve the environment and positively impact the healthcare experience. As such, music performance in a hospital setting would best be listed under wellness. Now that we have illustrated some of the music experiences that we believe fall within the gap, here are some questions we would like you to think about. Is it okay to claim experiences fall under special music education or music therapy when the primary purpose of the experiences is not working on educational or therapeutic objectives? No, we don't believe so. We understand there may be some advantages to allying with special music education or music therapy since these are much larger professions. However, if educational or therapeutic objectives are not the primary purpose, then claiming to be a part of either of those professions misrepresents the true intent of the experiences. This misrepresentation could prove problematic because without proper identification, the experience cannot be facilitated in a way that is purposeful, intentional, or marketed to those who will most benefit. Should our commission help others acknowledge and or identify as providing music experiences within the gap? Yes, we believe we should. Our commission represent one of the leading international voices regarding working with persons with disabilities in music. If we do not help others to understand the differences between the types of music experiences they are providing, then who will? Furthermore, helping others to acknowledge and or identify the purpose will help create clearer delineations between the experiences provided for persons with disabilities. Does defining the gap impact how we view our commission? Yes, we believe it does. At present, the Commission's mission statement already acknowledges these experiences fall within the scope, as it states it contributes to any field of practice that examines the relationship between music, education, health, and well-being. However, we have not clearly defined what it really means to provide experiences that fall within the gap or how those experiences fit within our Commission. Additionally, because we have not openly identified the continuum of music experiences, we have failed to highlight the diversity of services provided for persons with disabilities as well as their value for participants. There are so many wonderful music experiences across the world and we should be proud that we and others like us provide not only music education and music therapy to persons with disabilities, but also community music, recreational music making, and music-based wellness opportunities as well. Finally, does defining the gap impact training, professional development, and service provision? Yes, we believe it does. Defining the gap helps us identify the scope of each experience so that we can ensure facilitators have the necessary training to facilitate experiences. It also helps us identify what is needed in terms of continuing education and most importantly, ensures that experiences are safely and effectively facilitated. We hope that this presentation has brought up some important questions and perspectives to consider regarding the diverse musical experiences we facilitate. By recognizing the true objectives of each musical experience and using this continuum as a guide, we'll be equipped with the knowledge and tools to better serve all participant populations and better highlight the diversity of music services provided for persons with disabilities within the international community. Thank you.